just a second. We're going to get going. All right. Welcome, everybody. Dr. Ben here, F.A. Well Centers, and we're going to go over today uh, live Q&A. So bring your questions, but ultimately, I'm going to start with a question we get all the time. How can people lose weight? Give me a tip. Give me a trick. Something simple, something easy to lose weight. And here you go. Uh, pop down below where you guys are watching from. Love to see that all over the country, all over the world, wherever you guys are at. And again, Dr. Ben Gallagher, F.A. Wilson. We have offices in Colorado, Tennessee. We work with patients all over the world. Um, so ask any questions below. I'll be going through whatever, half hour, hour, hour long you have questions. I will be on here answering questions. So um, let's get into it. I'm going to let you guys know a hack, a trick, a whatever that can help get people to lose weight. And what we know is that this is going to cause weight gain if you're doing this one thing. But if you're uh, changing it, you can actually start losing weight. Hey, Heather in Indiana there. Good to see you. Nancy, good to see you there in Steamboat. And Lori in Wisconsin. Um, Lucy in South Africa. Great to see you guys. So here, here's the thing. The research is coming out now and showing that people that sleep with some type of light in their room are going to have a higher heart rate throughout the night. They're going to have worse heart rate variability, which is a complex equation of how the heart rate's doing. Um, hey there, Karen in Denver. Uh, good to see you. And uh, yeah, okay, I'll get to that one, uh, Klein Hop, in just a second. And so um, any type of light, any type of light is, is going to really affect somebody's body. It's going to cause them to not get into as good of a deep restorative sleep state. The heart rate's going to be higher. And the research shows if you're sleeping with any type of artificial light uh, on during the nighttime, you are going to have more obesity. You're going to be higher weight, all these different things. So uh, so think about this. If even, even if your cell phone you know, is, light is on, even if your alarm clock light is on, uh, if you've got a street light coming in from across the street, uh, if you, you know, we've got a, a, this big massage chair in the room and it's got the, uh, the whatever brand it is, the lights kind of light up on there. So I turn that off every night. Um, I, I have what are called blackout curtains. And if somebody is going to darken their room, it is a very good chance if you're having a hard time losing weight and not sleeping as well as you should, if you black out your room, that is going to be a beautiful hack that you can do to potentially lose weight. So give that one a shot. Um, so that is that is going to be huge. We've got um, Southeast Missouri. Great to see you, Gina. We've got uh, multiple of our team live in Branson. So um, yeah, down, down your way. All right, we had a question here. Uh, this is Klein. Uh, again, bring your questions. Ask them down below. Anything and everything you've got, bring your questions. So um, how do I phase out of the processed stuff I'm eating? So this is like anything. You know, when we think about phasing out of whatever, phasing out of, of toxic uh, chemicals that you're cleaning with, of laundry detergents, of makeup that has a lot of chemicals in it, the average female, the time they leave the bathroom in the morning, they've already been exposed to 200 chemicals chemicals every single morning by the time they just are done hairspray or or uh, lotions or makeup or eye stuff whatever whatever you girls do um, I've got four boys and just my wife so I, I don't have to have to get exposed to a lot of that um, but by the time you leave the bathroom you're exposed to 200 chemicals or more uh, so what do we do? Well, it'd be easy to say, hey, just come in, take a big trash bag and throw everything away and get out. But the real, the realistic way to do this, uh, Klein is going to go piece by piece. So when you run out of a laundry detergent, replace it with a more natural version. Uh, seventh generation is an easy way to go. Um, you, know, you can get it at Target in a lot of different places. It's is it the best. Eh, pretty darn close. It's really good, um, but it's easy for a lot of people to get. But same thing with processed food. So when you run out of out of that turkey breast, that's just like the cheap turkey breast with uh, preservatives, a lot of different things, you go and you get the natural version. When you run out of, out of a soda, go and buy a spin drift or some type of a sparkly drink. Um, hey, Helen, good to see you there in Michigan and Bonnie in Nebraska. Good to see you guys. Um, 
So you just go piece by piece by piece. When you when you run out of something, replace it with something better to get the process stuff out, to get the, the bad things out of there. Um, what do you think of heavy metal detox? It depends, and this is uh, Lisa, depends on what is actually going on and what your exposure has been. So for everybody to do a heavy metal detox, probably not necessary, probably not gonna be a needle mover, not gonna be beneficial. But um, for some people that have worked in the dental industry, some people that have worked in um, in certain industries where they're exposed to those chemicals, uh, different different toxicities through there, then yeah, I think it could really be beneficial, but you've got to do it the right way. And so um, that's where binders really come into play, chlorella, um, different types of, of uh, detox pathways have to be opened up. So before you detox, you got to make sure that liver's clearing out like it's supposed to. So, uh, you know, absolutely having some of those issues through there. Um, make sure that that's opening up. Cheryl in Virginia, Patricia in Montana. Um, I fall asleep better if I have YouTube playing all night. I think this probably isn't the best way to fall asleep, but better than having a hard time falling asleep, which I often do. Yeah, so Lynette, uh, I guarantee you that is not a good quality sleep all night long. I guarantee you your heart rate's gonna be higher than it needs to, and it's going to be leading to um, excess body weight, uh, cardiovascular disease, lots of things in the research. So figure out why you're not able to go to sleep in the first place, and then start taking some massive action on there because sleeping with YouTube all night is not the solution. Uh, PCO, uh, PCOS help. All right, here we go, PCOS. Uh, let's go into the um, kind of the, the Cliff Notes version here. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. People think about PCOS as the problem, but PCOS is the symptom, and it sits on the ovaries. A lot of women, young women get it. Um, they'll put them on metformin, which is a diabetes drug. Uh, they'll look at it as this insulin resistance, blood sugar issue. And so PCOS, we absolutely, 100% of the time, have to get the blood sugar stabilized. That's why we use continuous glucose monitor. We are able to see that blood sugar when it goes up, when it goes down, and you're able to then start making the changes. This is how we reverse PCOS all the time. But remember, PCOS is the end stage symptom. We see a lot of the other signs even before it gets to PCOS. If your testosterone and your DHEA are at the higher level, are uh, you know even the testosterone is over 50, 60, 70, DHEA over 200, 250, 300, uh, there's a very good chance that your blood sugar's out of balance, you're creeping into PCOS, uh, you're going to be getting these excess androgens, and even some uh, hairline uh, regression for women, you're gonna potentially get hair in the places you don't want, hair in the places you do want, and getting some issues through there. So PCOS, you've gotta work through the liver, those detoxification pathways, you've gotta work on the gut, you've gotta work on the blood sugar. Speaking of blood sugar, Brittany, go ahead and pop that link down below. Um, so this coming Sunday, I'm starting a five-part masterclass, Blood Sugar Mastery Masterclass. It's going to be, um, each one's at almost hour long. You're going to have a 24 hour period to watch each one of those. First time I've ever done this. Uh, it's kind of my life work put out to you guys and uh, and it's totally free. Just register, click the link down below and we'll be getting so much information, way more in depth than anything I've ever done on YouTube, Facebook, uh, TikTok, anywhere. This is by far the most in depth I've gone. And if you do everything I tell you to do, I guarantee you, you're going to change your health status. So uh, check that one out. Brittany's got that link down below. If you can't find it, send us a message. What are your thoughts on people using diabetic medication for weight loss. Here we go. So they're using diabetic medication, metformin, for PCOS. Uh, I just talked to a lady in California yesterday who's using metformin, using a diabetic medication for weight loss. Did she lose weight? Absolutely not. Um, they put her on thyroid medication because, um, hey Jerry in Fort Morgan, good to see you. Again, pop down where you guys are watching. I'm answering questions, all types of questions, anything and everything. I'm going to stay here as long as I need to to get through these. So uh, stay on, and I will answer your question if, if uh, I don't get it to it right away. Just stay with us, and I will get through those. So um, diabetic medication for weight loss. Does that even make sense? You know, you're like, why would I have to take diabetic medication to lose weight? Why don't I just fix my, my blood sugar imbalances in the first place because that's, if it actually works, 
it's because there's a blood sugar issue. And here's the deal with that patient from California. She has a blood sugar issue, but she's actually going hypoglycemic a lot of times and spiking. And so that metformin, all that does is kind of squash it down. And then she's even more hypoglycemic and creating more problems in her body, more inflammation, and she's holding on to more weight. Hey, Glenda, great to see you there in Arizona, soon to be Iowa. Exciting. Uh, so it is a Band-Aid. Using diabetic medication for uh, weight loss is a band-aid. That is not a solution, that is not a fix, nothing at all that is going to be helpful long-term. You've gotta to get to that underlying why. If you don't know if you have insulin resistance, if you don't know if you've got uh, blood sugar swings, anything else, then, uh, then you've got to get that figured out. And we can drop ship blood work anywhere in this country. Click the link in the bio. Um, if you're on TikTok, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, send us a DM and we will be able to, um, uh, we'll be able to get that out to you. Uh, so Helen, I was under the impression metformin is not good for you. So it, here's the deal. Some people have a really hard time with metformin. Bad for the digestive tract, bad for kidneys, liver, a lot of different things. Um, some people feel totally fine on it, but is it good for you? No, I, that, that's not the solution. It, it's not this, oh wow, it's gonna be, keep me younger, it's gonna make me lose weight. Your blood sugar's out of balance. If metformin works for you, you have a blood sugar issue that can be solved by changing what you're putting in your mouth. And that's, that's the solution there. Um, all right, uh, thoughts on, this is Amy, great to see you, Amy. Thoughts on skipping breakfast, drinking protein shake for lunch, then dinner, uh, also workout. Um, so, you know, I guarantee you, Amy, you are hypoglycemic. If all you're doing is drinking a protein shake for lunch and then um, having dinner, uh, you know, this in theory could be a form of intermittent fasting, but you're calorie depriving. True intermittent fasting, where you only eat for eight hours a day, six hours a day, 10 hours a day, whatever, you're eating, you need to eat just as many calories during that window of eating time as you would an entire day. So you still need 15, 16, 1800 calories depending on your activity level. Um, I did, I'm coaching my kids soccer and I was out there running around with them, uh, these high school kids, and I, I didn't even do the whole thing. But it said I burned, uh, my watch told me I burned 750 extra calories that night. I was pretty hungry that night. Um, so here's the deal, intermittent fasting, is okay for some people, especially if you're a high glycemic, insulin resistance, pre-diabetic, diabetic, anything like that, intermittent fasting can be helpful. But for like the patient in California that's swinging, especially having the dips, intermittent fasting is one of the worst things you can do. It stresses out the adrenals, cause all kinds of problems. If you're gonna do intermittent fasting, it's actually better to do that in the evening, to do that uh, from like five, and then, then don't eat until eight in the morning, but eat breakfast. They call it break fast for a reason, because you're breaking your fast. Uh, let's see, any more questions over on this one? Nope, we're good on there. Uh, let's go through these. Uh, how to lose weight on Depo. Um, yeah, you know, so we're looking at uh, at hormones. This is um, Brit, Brit, Brittany Sullivan. Um, so Depo hormone hormone shots. Um, it's challenging. You know, you're you're having hormone replacement therapy. It's throwing your hormones out of balance. You're going to uh, need to do everything you can to make sure you're processing those hormones out, make sure your liver's detoxifying, uh, but it's definitely going to be more challenging. Again, what are your thoughts on intermittent eating, Heather? We just talked on that. So it's okay if you're pre-diabetic, diabetic, diabetic insulin-resistant, uh, metabolic syndrome, any of those things, uh, but if you're hypoglycemic, if you crash easy, you're gonna be stressing out your adrenals, and really to do it optimally, you need to intermittent fast from eat your last meal at like 5 p.m. and don't eat again until 8 a.m. That is going to be the best way to intermittent fast. Um, is probiotic good for diverticulitis? Uh, this is Camille. So great thing. Thanks uh, for jumping on Camille. Haven't seen you on here before. Good to see you. So diverticulitis, we've got irritation in that colon, um, inflammation, and a probiotic. It's not going to be a needle mover. If all you do is take a probiotic, that is not going to be like, oh my gosh, my, my diverticulitis is fixed. You've got to start all the way up top, well, especially just talking about digestion. You've got to make sure you're chewing your food well, 30, 
30 times per bite, you've got to make sure you've got enough stomach acid, that your uh, liver and gallbladder are secreting the bile like it needs to. If you don't have your gallbladder, then you may need to take some bile salts. You've got to look at your small intestine, see if there's leaky gut, see if you have enough enzymes, your large intestine. And then you get into the thought of taking probiotics. Well, most people have bad bacteria, yeast, these things out of balance in the gut that if all you do is take some probiotic, you're not going to get there. you got to kill off the bad stuff, build up the good stuff, kill off the bad stuff, build up the good stuff, and maybe do that two or three times. Brittany, you want to put a link for the oil of oregano, my favorite uh, favorite product of all time. If there's one thing that I could use on everybody, um, it would probably be this oil of oregano. It's an amazing time release, kills off a lot of that, that bad stuff. Then you can take the probiotic. Uh, how to lose weight with hypothyroidism. Well, here's the deal. Just like that patient I was talking about yesterday in California, um, she's on thyroid medication. Her doctor said, you have hypothyroidism. But what we saw was her T4 was way up here. Her T3 was way down here. She needs T3, absolutely. That's the active usable form. But T4 converts into T3. T4, she's taking the Synthroid. That's T4. Level thyroxin, that's T4. It has to convert, though, to the T3, and that's where your metabolism is going to come from. That's how you're going to lose weight. So if you're not um, converting, you're going to have hypothyroidism, but it's not a thyroid problem. It's a conversion problem, 60% in the liver, 20% in the gut. You need to know if it's Hashimoto's. If it's Hashimoto's, that's autoimmune thyroid. Two types of Hashimoto's, more for the thyroid and more for the transportation. There's two different markers that you need to test for for Hashimoto's. If it's Hashimoto's, it's not a thyroid disease, it's an autoimmune disease. You need to look at all of these other systems. If it is Hashimoto's, you probably have leaky gut. If it is Hashimoto's or if it is hypothyroid, you probably have blood sugar swings. You've got all of these different things that need to be addressed in addition to just giving you the magic iodine or herb or T3 or T4 or whatever it is. Uh, Healing Our Energy 22, hello, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, Julie, oil of oregano makes me throw up. How do I take it without getting sick? Here's the deal, Julie. This is the, the great part that we look at is that the kind we have is time released. It gets down into the digestive tract. If you're doing capsules, if you're doing drops, it's probably going to pop open too soon and cause some di uh, digestion issues. This is Ruth, my diabetic husband, is on metformin and has severe diarrhea. Could the medication cause it? 100% absolutely Google metformin side effects. Look at on, on TikTok, I've got a video on metformin, like half a million viewers, and there's so many people commented, um, yep, I can't take it, diarrhea, digestion, diarrhea, throat, but all these things. And then there's the occasional person, I take it every day and I'm totally fine. There are some people that do okay with it, but there are a lot of people that are not doing well. Um, come on. All right, come home at 8 p.m. What best for dinner? Please help. Um, so this is like the dance. So yeah, what is best for dinner? Please help. I would say if you're eating dinner at 8 p.m., eat a smaller meal. Dr. Bredesen, David Bredesen, um, he wrote that book, The End of Alzheimer's. If you or a loved one has Alzheimer's, this is the book to get, The End of Alzheimer's. And he talks about the later you eat, and closer to bedtime, the less repair your brain is going to have. So it's way better to not eat as much at night and be a little bit hungry than to eat a big meal and be stuffed. So if you're getting home at 8 p.m., something light, something easy, um, you know, it's, but still that's going to keep that blood sugar stabilized all night long. Um, if you're working until then, then bring some extra food. Bring another another meal, another dinner, um, you know, eat, eat before you leave work, something like that to get that dialed in. Um, came in just at the right time, Cali 2AZ88. I'm assuming you went to Arizona from California, like a lot of people have. I've started listening to sleep meditation music on YouTube. No ads. That's okay, right? So as long, remember, we're talking about the, the bright light, um, and that's that's one of the big things for anybody jumping on. That's one of the big things that we look at is if you are getting exposed to artificial light at nighttime while you're sleeping, you are going to have a harder time losing weight, easier time getting obese, easier time having cardiovascular disease, your heart rate's going to be higher, all of these different things. Um, so if you're listening to it, I would have it across the room, not right next to your head. Um, so you know, there's EMFs, there's a lot of other things going on, uh, and then have it covered. Put a towel over it, something like that, so that there is no extra light. Get blackout curtains. Um, you can do that sleep meditation music. You can do um, you know, a sound machine, a lot of different ways to do that.
Hey Gina, good to see you. Uh, thanks for the, the kind uh, emojis. My cholesterol is 302, however, all my other blood work is normal. This is Diva Fit for You. Um, I, here, here's the deal with blood work, and we run blood work on every single patient that comes in. We drop ship blood kits around the country. Um, we review these. I've got uh, five other doctors on my FA team. We've got offices in Colorado, Tennessee. We work remotely. We see blood work every single day. And to see a cholesterol of 302, I guarantee you everything is not okay and this is the difference between when we run blood work when somebody else runs blood work one we're going to run way more things we look at ferritin and non-fasting insulin and we look at c-reactive protein and ggt for fatty liver all of these different things so we throw the net out wide but then we narrow it down to where it should be which is going to be the healthy optimal range. So what does that mean? Well, vitamin D, 30 to 100, most labs, for us, 60 to 80. So if they say it's okay or normal, well, you know, well, first of all, you don't want to be normal. That's like the standard American diet. You do not want to be normal. You want it to be optimized. So you want to optimize everything else in there. So I guarantee you, uh, send me over a copy of your blood work and I'll, I'll circle a couple things that I say are not normal. Uh, see how to lower cholesterol without taking a statin. Again, Diva Fit for Life, you've got to figure out why it's high in the first place. Again, um, ask any questions you guys have, uh, put those down below. I'm also having a Blood Sugar Mastery Masterclass starting this coming Sunday. Um, Brittany put that, that link in here if you guys can't find it um, in the, the link tree in the bio. You can click on that one and there's uh, a way to register. This is absolutely free. It's my entire life work on blood sugar uh, spewed out over five days. Uh, tons of tons of minutes of, of me talking, but you'll learn so much. You'll learn how to change your life with the stuff we're going to give you. Uh, glass of red wine once per day, good, bad. Uh, Amy, the research is now showing that under 40, drinking some, even wine every day uh, has more detrimental effects than positive effects. Over 40, there's some signs that potentially it could be a little bit beneficial, but it's it, here's the deal. There's really no good reason for it. It, it. There's no value. It's not going to be like adding, oh my gosh, I'm so much better because of that. Um, so red wine, you know, you can find a study that shows it does this or that, but it really, you know, it, it, most people that are drinking a glass of red wine every day, it's because they're trying to calm their brain down and they've got some type of, of stress, anxiety, other things going on. Um, Lisa, good to see you uh, again. Uh, oh, there's uh, Ashante Larson in New York. Good to see you. Um, I just found out that my blood pressure keeps going up and down. It's not steady. What can I do about it? Um, so first, figure out uh, you know why why that might be happening. Um, do you, are you having uh, blood vessel issues? Do you have a lot of um, uh, a lot of blood vessels that have blown out in the legs, things like that, where it's kind of pooling. But here's the other thing that we really look at. Most people, if they're having blood pressure, especially dips like that and those swings, is it's usually an adrenal issue. So it could be adrenal fatigue, it could be adrenal stress. Uh, check your cortisol and your DHEA. If, uh, if your testosterone is low, that's usually an adrenal thing as well and you're in a chronic stress state. And that's gonna be those adrenals as well. Every time that blood sugar spikes up and crashes down that stresses out the adrenals so odds are it's an adrenal thing the adrenals give tone to our blood vessels and if those blood vessels are not pumping that blood work back uh, that blood back up to the brain then you'll start getting dizzy when you're changing positions all types of different things so um, I would look into the adrenals first um, and oh, I lost my spot here skip any of you guys. There it is. Okay. Um, what about Ozenpec? Again, it, it's still a band-aid. This is uh, this is Caitlin. Ozenpec is still a band-aid. Instead of metformin, they, they use Ozenpec and they go, ooh, but there's there's no GI distress from there. But you're like, you know what? That's not fixing anything. Fix the 
why. Fix your blood sugar, change what you're eating. Use a continuous glucose monitor. In my master class, I'm going to teach you exactly how to use a fingerprint glucose monitor and what you need to do. And that is how you're actually going to get better. That's how you're going to get healthy. When I look at somebody, um, I know that if we stabilize everybody's blood sugar around this entire world between 85 and 110, we would reverse or prevent 90% of chronic health conditions. Um, hey, Pamela, good to see you trying to drink water instead of soft drinks, but can't stand just plain water. What is the best flavoring to add? And are there some artificial sweeteners that are worse than others? Yes, absolutely. Aspartame, some of those. Do not be doing uh, diet sodas, anything like that. You know, a stevia, especially if it's a natural uh, form of stevia, is not bad. Uh, but look, look into some of like the um, uh, the bubbly waters uh, are going to be good, so you can um, get the can. It's the same kind of you know you you get that fizzy, a lot of those different things. Um, so, Ruth, is there an alternative to metformin? Absolutely. Get your blood sugar stabilized. That's the alternative to metformin is get your blood sugar stabilized between 85 and 110 every single day, and you can do that. We see it all the time with patients. We see people reverse their diabetes. Why are you on metformin in the first place? It's because of what you're putting in your mouth. I mean, that, uh, unless it's type 1 diabetes, in which case it's autoimmune, but even with that, even with type 1 diabetes, we can get people between 100 and 110 steady 90% of the time. So um, we can we can see that. So it's not just, hey, what do, oh, that, do we take that? Do we, uh, what do we take instead of metformin? You take the food into your body that's going to stabilize that blood sugar, and it's totally fixable. I have hypothyroidism and diabetes now. How do I fix this? Um, Sassy Brat 68, here we go. Uh, hi, hi, oh, hyperthyroidism and diabetes. You have to see if that's autoimmune, um, but the diabetes, that's the easy one. You start tracking, this is why we use continuous glucose monitor. It's a patch that goes on and on. It shows you 24 seven what your blood sugar is doing. My 18 year old son, um, he's a woodworker, he's uh, a senior in high school, and he's lost like 12 pounds just by putting that, uh, that blood sugar monitor on in the last month and able to see, hey, those five corn tortillas made me go up this high, and that, that gluten-free uh, Thai noodles made it go up this high, and he's not doing uh, those things and doing less and more of the things that are keeping him steady, and that's one of the best ways you can, you can possibly lose weight is to keep that blood sugar as steady as possible, but also reverse diabetes. We have patients that literally, if any of you guys are on here that have used a CGM, put a note in the comments below and tell us how amazing they are. Um, you know, it, it's, it's an absolute game changer. So that would be the number one thing you can do to fix it. Jump on my master class and, and you'll learn all of those things. Uh, yeah, they're using Ozempic and Monjaro for weight loss. Yeah, again, fix why the body is holding on to extra, extra weight. Remember, here, here's the number one thing I want you to get out of today. Weight is not the problem. Weight is the symptom of ill health. And so if you are overweight, if you're not able to lose that 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever it is, you are not healthy. You are not healthy. I guarantee you there are systems out of balance in your body. And once you fix those, then the weight starts coming up. Is there an adrenal vitamin we can take without being checked? Um, ashwagandha is a good one. You know, for a lot of people, that's just a nice neutral uh, adrenal supplement that you can take. And Gina, um, I have to say I listened to you and others in functional med world for years and noticed my cholesterol rising and blood pressure. I know the blood pressure is adrenal stress and I'm managing it. I just naturally got my cholesterol under 200. Keep talking. I lost a few pounds too and have thus far not replaced uh, or repeated my genes. Uh, by limiting sugar, good job. What is your range for normal iron level? So I don't really care about iron. I'm more interested, Stacy, in ferritin. So ferritin is going to be the stored iron. And if there's only one marker I could test on everybody, it would be ferritin. Ferritin is going to go high when there's inflammatory conditions, liver issues, insulin resistance, blood sugar, all these things. It's gonna go low when there's malabsorption, leaky gut, a lot of those things. So I like uh, ferritin 40 to 125 for women, 40 to 150 for men. Some people are saying down to 70 or 80, and I think that's getting a little bit too low and that everybody should donate blood. I I'm not on that bandwagon, but I do love a good ferritin test. What about metformin for prediabetes? Jennifer, uh, good to see you. So that's something you could do, or you could do cinnamon, or you could do alpha-lipoic acid, or you could do berberine, or there's different things that you can take 
instead of metformin. But here's the deal. What you're going to learn in my blood sugar master class starting on Sunday is what to look for and how to track the blood sugar and see why it's going up, why it's going down, and how to keep it steady. And, and it's really simple. You, know, you eat more of the foods that keep that blood sugar steady and less of the ones that don't. And we see people reverse prediabetes, diabetes all the time. You know, that it, it's actually one of the easiest things that you can work on and that you can change. If somebody wants to put the time and energy in, it can make massive difference. So, um, is berberine useful for prediabetes? Shelly, I answered your question. Sure, it can be. But why don't you just fix the why? Fix why that blood sugar uh, is out of balance in the first place. Any connection you have seen with autism and type 1 diabetes? So autism, yes, we, we have seen, and not directly with type 1 diabetes and, and autism, but autism, I wouldn't be surprised in the next five years if they come out and say most autistic children have some type of autoimmune, and whether that's in the brain or something going on that way. Uh, it is, autism is a major inflammatory immune reaction. Uh, a lot of, of autistic children are born from moms that have blood sugar imbalances. They have autoimmune like Hashimoto's, different, uh, different inflammatory things during the pregnancy. A lot of different genetic things were stimulated um, for that child to get the get autism. And so uh, it's not surprising that if somebody's autistic, uh, they might also have type 1 diabetes or some other type of autoimmune condition. So absolutely, we see that all the time. Um, I am on 0.5, uh, this is Tammy Salas, I'm on 0.5 Ozempec, and there's supposedly a shortage on that dosage, I take it for blood sugar. Again, start monitoring your glucose levels. Look, look at where it goes. Does it go over 110? Eat less of that. Does it stay in the 90, 95, 100, 100, 510 range? Eat more of that. And, and then you don't have to worry about anybody's medication, any anybody, any supply chain shortage, anything at all. Hey, Misty, good to see you. Uh, my diabetic husband also has cancer. He has no appetite, but drinks four to six boost drinks a day. What would a boost drinks affect his blood sugar level? Uh, yes. I don't know to what extent. It's super easy. You get a glucose monitor, finger prick glucose monitor, focus finger, um, 45 to 60 minutes after that, and you'll see what that is doing, but I guarantee you it's not good for him. How about that? Um, and especially having cancer, uh, cancer is a metabolic condition. It's not a genetic condition for the vast majority of people, and you need to stabilize that blood sugar. Number one thing you need to do, if you know somebody gets diagnosed with cancer or has a cancer risk, stabilize their blood sugar every single day. My daughter was told she has insulin resistance and hypothyroidism and now psoriasis. How do we help? This is K.R. Spence. Good to see you there, K.R. Spence. Um, so, yeah, again, pretty simple. Insulin resistance, start tracking blood sugar. I've got a 17-year-old we're just working on now. Liver enzymes are really high. She's uh, lost 10 pounds. Her body's inflamed, all kinds of stuff. And she eats a lot of sugar. And we're going to put a continuous glucose monitor on her, and she is going to see why it goes up and why it goes down, and she's going to stop doing the bad stuff, start doing the good stuff, and keep that as stabilized as possible. Hypothyroidism, if you have not tested for Hashimoto's, you've got to test for Hashimoto's and the psoriasis. Guarantee you there's some leaky gut, some uh, gut malabsorption, uh, microbiome imbalances, a lot of different things. If you're not getting the solutions, we work with patients all over the country. Uh, click the link in the bio and we can schedule a discovery call. We'll sit down, talk to you about the process, get the blood work done, look at Hashimoto's, look at all of these different things. Um, how do you monitor your glucose daily? Lori, great question. Two ways. One, uh, finger prick glucose monitor. We did that for years and years with patients reverse diabetes, all kinds of different things. Um, and I'm gonna teach you guys exactly how to do that in the, in the Blood Sugar Masterclass. And then number two is the continuous glucose monitor, which is what we do now with every single patient. This is like a $2,000 a month device that people with type one diabetes use, but we are privileged enough to use it uh, with every one of our patients, whether they're diabetic or not. And uh, you just slap it on the arm and it's way cheaper than that. Uh, we, we get it for pennies on the dollar. And it shoots over, it, you can see it on your watch, on your phone, and you can see exactly where that blood sugar goes. Anybody watching that, uh, my patients, I know some of you guys are out there watching, um, put a comment in so I can let people, uh, I can let people know 
um, and they can see what that looks like. So, uh, KR Spence, absolutely get a hold of us. We can help your daughter very quickly. Good ways to lose weight with no thyroid. Well, first of all, you have to make sure that you're converting. You're taking level thyroxin or Synthroid. You need to make sure you're converting from that T4 to the T3. If your T4 is at the high side and your T3 is at the low side, there's no amount of thyroid medication that's going to help. You're not converting. 60% in the liver, 20% in the gut, you've got to convert that T4 to T3. That's going to be a huge part of this process. But then you have to look at every other system, Tammy. You've got to go through the gut, you've got to go through the adrenals, through the uh, blood sugar, through the liver, through all these different systems and make sure that you're doing well. Again, welcome everybody, anybody that's just jumping on. Um, uh, welcome, pop down below where you guys are watching from, I'll give you a shout out. And any type of question, I've got, uh, I've got probably another 15 minutes here to keep, keep answering questions, so keep bringing them. Um, uh, so then we have uh, Melissa. Uh, uh, psoriasis, I have diabetes and now some kind of psoriasis around my ears and scalp. Yeah, so you, you've got inflammation. You know, if somebody's got diabetes, their blood sugar's out of balance, it's creating inflammation, their gut's probably off, there's just, it's this whole body that has gotten out of balance. You cannot just go to a specialist, you can't just go to um, go to somebody that, you know, you go, ooh, uh, let me look at your kidney, let me look at your skin, let me look at your, your pituitary, whatever it is. Hey Marla, yeah, thank you uh, for that. CGM is a game changer, keeps you accountable. Absolutely, you, you know, once you put it on, and Marla's doing a great job, once you do put it on, you know exactly what's going on and what to do and what not to do. You can't hide from it. That's why I say you can't hide from your blood sugar at that point. So, uh, Melissa, you've got to get the underlying imbalances figured out. If you are not getting the answers, click that link in the in the bio and get a uh, discovery call scheduled. We can talk about those are free. Any advice for women in menopause? I'm struggling with weight gain. Just living life. 51. All right. Um, so yes, absolutely. It's not just about your hormones. One, you got to figure out why your hormones are off in the first place. If you've got low T, it's probably because of that chronic stress you're under. I always say uh, how low a woman's testosterone is directly proportional to the stress that they are under. So you've got to make sure that you're managing that stress, getting that dialed in. Number one stressor to the adrenal glands is blood sugar dips there. Um, so that can be a huge part of it, but uh, you've got to make sure your liver's detoxifying like it needs to. You've got to make sure that uh, your body is working as well as possible on all these other systems. So stabilize your blood sugar, check your gut, uh, check your thyroid, check your liver, do all those things, and you're going to start uh, stop struggling to, to gain weight. But the other thing, just like we were talking about earlier, make sure your room is totally blacked out. Blackout curtains, no lights coming from phones or iPads or alarm clocks, anything like that. Um, what are some good suggestions to break a fast? So uh, every morning you should be breaking a fast. That's why I call it breakfast. And so I love, uh, after I work out, I love, uh, I'll do four, four or five eggs, a bunch of uh, veggies. We've got a big greenhouse and throw a bunch of veggies in there. There, some fat, avocado, things like that, and uh, and absolutely, you know, that's a great way to, to break break a fast. A good three, four hundred calories, um, a good uh, twenty to thirty grams of protein. Um, some we went over yesterday. Most of you guys should be getting about thirty grams of protein per meal if you want to maintain or grow muscle. Um, all right. Did you answer the question about loose skin after weight loss? Maybe I missed your answer. Uh, I, I did not see that one. So uh, loose skin after weight loss. This, this Linda, is the same type of thing, and you've done great, you know, weights changing, things like that. But then you get these, you know, saggy arms and stuff. So ultimately, you've got to fill them up. You've got to fill it up with more muscle. You're, you're losing fat, but then you're putting, putting in muscle instead. So make sure you're eating enough protein at those meals, and make sure you're doing weight bearing exercise, some exercise that's going to break down that muscle and build up muscle as well. And that's going to be really important. But collagen is going to be just a general thing that you can do. You can take some collagen powders and things like that. Um, is, if you know you have a T4 to T3 conversion problem, what can I do to help with conversion? I have Hashimoto's and T3 antibodies. So, uh, Carolyn, you've got a little, little bit of uh, the best of both worlds there. You're attacking your own thyroid, but then the thyroid medication you're on or the thyroid you're kicking out is not getting to the tissues like it 
needs to because you're not converting to T3. So there are some specific nutritionals that we'll use with that, but the biggest thing is to focus on your liver and focus on your gut. So the liver is going to um, be 60% of where that conversion is taking place. So I would run through, do a full um, liver repair uh, program. We do one that's about three weeks long and just really work on, on helping that liver do what it needs to do. Keep those liver enzymes down. Um, keep that blood sugar stabilized. Big part of liver stress is because that blood sugar is swinging all over the place. Um, husband's gut is a mess. What to start to do to heal? Well, first thing, Trisha, uh, you know, without doing blood work, without doing anything else, simple things. Get him to chew 30 times per bite. Get him to not drink fluids with his meals. Get him to keep his protein and his carbs separate at each meal. And then get him to eat in a relaxed environment. So write those down. Brittany will put, put them down in the comments as well. So uh, chew 30 times, no fluids with your meals. Uh, keep your proteins and starches separate. And then you're going to eat in a relaxed environment. Just start there. That's not probiotics, that's not enzymes, that's not blood work. Anything that, you know, if, if you brought them into us, we, we totally fix it. But this is just simple place to start. Get going there and see see what happens. Uh, hey, Paula, good to see you up there in Wyoming. Hope you are doing great. Um, let's go through here. And I never have an appetite and struggling to lose weight. Absolutely, because if you're not getting enough calories, we see this all the time. As a typical female, this is Katrina, uh, Katrina 94B, um, uh, as a typical female, you should probably be getting 15, 16, 1700 calories a day. Unless you're like really active, then you even need more than that. But even, even somebody that's not very active, you should not be going lower than 1500 calories. And this is kind of general, but for most people. So what do we do? One, you got to figure out why you don't have an appetite, probably because your vagus nerve isn't going, you're not digesting, moving things through, uh, you're not absorbing like you need to. So you've got to get your digestion and improving, uh, but you're probably going to need more calories to, uh, to lose, lose weight there. Any advice for healing mild pancreatitis? Thanks. Yeah, so working, working on the digestive tract and going through, um, just like this next one, I deal with gastroparesis. I have lost weight. Of course you've lost weight. You're throwing up. This is Tina Price. You know, Tina, you are throwing up every day. Um, of course you're, you're losing weight. That's what gastroparesis is. People vomit. And it's amazing. You know, it, I, I don't know what percentage it is now, but I, I'd say it's way more than what the, the research is showing because we see it on social media all the time. People deal with gastroparesis. But again, start, start with the mouth. Chew your food really well. Um, you know, don't drink fluids with that meals. Give your body a chance to digest. Go into a relaxed environment. It's gastroparesis. A lot of it's between your ears. You can either fight or flight, or you can rest and digest. You cannot do both at the same time. Um, so that is a huge part of gastroparesis is get that brain out of that fight or flight pattern. And that's going to be a huge part of that healing, but also looking at the microbiome, looking at the leaky gut, looking at all these different things. Linda, good morning from Montana. I'm approaching the halfway point um, with the FA program. I've lost eight and a half pounds. I feel wonderful. Linda, awesome. Uh, that is that is amazing. So glad you're doing so well. Uh, again, we work with patients all over. We've got multiple uh, Colorado offices. We've got Tennessee offices. Um, and then we can drop ship blood work anywhere in the country. So thanks for the kind work, Linda. You're doing amazing. Keep up the good work. Marla, is it okay to eat proteins and carbs together if they're good carbs like almond flour versus bad carbs? So uh, an almond flour, almonds really are not carbohydrates. So coconut flour, almond flour, uh, cassava flour is going to be a carbohydrate. And that, you know, for a lot of people actually is a bad carb. Um, hey, Pamela, good to see you there in Kentucky. Uh, so, uh, so absolutely, um, yeah, almond flour, coconut flour would be okay. But again, check your, um, check your uh, blood sugar, but also check your digestion. Make sure you're breaking down like you need to. Um, and uh, I'm on Saxenda for weight loss, but find it's very dehydrating. This is T farm, even when I drink a lot of water. Yeah, so again, that is a Band-Aid. What happens when you stop taking that? If you lose weight, I guarantee you, you didn't fix why your body had weight in the first place. Remember, this is, I, I want everybody to write this down and think about this. Weight is not the problem. Weight is the symptom. People go, oh, if you lose weight, your blood pressure is going to get better. Well, maybe, but you don't have high blood pressure because you're overweight. 
you're overweight because you are imbalanced in your liver or your gut or your blood sugar or your thyroid or something else and your blood sugar goes up and your weight goes up and you're inflamed and all of those different things so if you're not fixing the why then you know no amount of drug or uh or you know, thing that's going to dehydrate you is going to fix that. Can you get shingles without having a rash? Um, you know, the vast majority of time you are, I've seen it on people's faces, seen it on their arms, uh, down their leg. We had a, a patient, she had shingles 13 times by the time she was 27. She came in on walking crutches and it destroyed that nerve. Uh, thankfully, we were able to build her body up, get it strong enough, and uh, She's actually went two years without getting shingles. She now works full times, uh, sings worship at, at a local church, and uh, just amazing, amazing lady Work, worked her little butt off to get that back. Um, so shingles, I've seen it affect a lot of different things, but ultimately, um, you know, can you get it without a rash? Yes, potentially, or just so mild that you don't even really see it. But if you've got all the symptoms, uh, but re remember, think about the why. Think about why somebody's getting shingles in the first place. This is recurrent chicken pox. And their body is stressed, it's beat down, it's not able to function like it needs to and fight things off. So you've got to build yourself up if you're getting shingles. Um, how to time five-day water fast with my menstrual cycle fasting always screws up my period. Um, I, the question would be, uh, this is pot coals uh, C, um, how to time five-day water fast. Why would you want to do a five-day water fast in the first place? Um, you know, the vast majority of people, it's it's going to be more stressful on their body than it's helpful. Uh, and so I, I would really be hesitant about five-day water fast, especially if you have adrenal fatigue, if you have stress, anything like that. You want to dig deep, look at all your blood work, everything before doing that. When do I take the oil of oregano? I, we usually just have patients take that with meals, and we'll go three, three times a day, pretty heavy dose, um, the oil of oregano to kill off uh, yeast, candida, bad bacteria, um, SIBO, a lot of different things. It's my favorite oil of oregano. Um, do you like ozone pack for weight loss? Again, you know, I, do I like it? Does it work? I, I, I bet some people have lost weight taking it. Otherwise, doctors would pr quit prescribing it. But, you know, that's off-label. Ozempec was uh, uh, approved for blood sugar, for pre-diabetes, diabetes, things like that. So it's off-label. It's not even what it's designed to do. So what, what are we looking at? Well, again, fix the why. Weight is not the cause of ill health. It's, it's, uh, it's actually a symptom of ill health. So fix your body, fix your imbalances, and you're going to be able to see these massive changes. Uh, what is oil oregano? This is Melissa. Uh, it, it is a great kill off. So the one we use, it's time released, it downs the digestive tract. If somebody has gas, bloating, and digestion, white coating on their tongue, if they've been told they have candida, bad bacteria, any of those things, um, it is crucial. It's one of my favorites. Uh, how to lose weight due to I, I age, I'm on a diuretic, but I still can't lose weight. So again, Barbara, you've got to go and look at all the other systems out of balance. Look at your thyroid, look at your liver, look at your, your gut, look at your adrenals, look at your female hormonal system, all these other things. And there might be six systems out of balance and you just start going check, check, check. If your doctor won't run all the tests, if they won't run your hormones, if they won't run your Hashimoto's, if they won't run your insulin resistance markers, Click the link in the bio, schedule a discovery call, it's free. We'll sit down with you and let you know exactly what's going on and go step by step through that process of getting you back. Uh, Melania Marie, good to see you. And Melissa, you are so welcome. Um, and yep, uh, I just uh, sleep stopped to comment how unprofessional it is to go to work with clothes looking like that. So am I wrinkly? Am I wrinkly, guys? Is that the, is that the issue here? So. Uh, I was in a rush this morning. I wanted to get here in time to uh, jump on here for free to give you guys as much information as I possibly can. Every Thursday morning I do a live Q&A, and so sorry I, I didn't have time to iron my scrubs, but uh, sleep deprived, maybe you're a little grumpy as well, uh, sleep deprived, but thanks for, for uh, stopping by to comment on that one. Um, and. I moved from Washington to Arizona. If metformin gives diarrhea, we just deal with it. No other options. Just deal with it. Uh, well, that's not the solution. You know, so why not fix why somebody is on metformin in the first place? Why not reverse your diabetes, reverse your prediabetes? 
And then you don't have to worry about being on a medication or a supplement or a surgery or gastric bypass or whatever else there is. Fix the blood sugar imbalances. Um, is protonics good for prediabetes? Uh, no. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, hi, how can I sleep better? Any tips? Yeah, so he, here's what we're looking at. Um, sleep tips, uh, this is what, where we started this morning. Um, the research is showing you're going to have higher rates of, of getting overweight, higher rates of, of high blood pressure, diabetes, all types of different things. If you're sleeping with artificial light in your room, if your TV is on, if your phone is, is uh, lit up, if you have an alarm clock right next to your head, if you've got street lights coming in through your windows, turn everything off, get blackout curtains, and that's one of the best things you can do for sleep. But here's some other things. Sleep cold. Um, so I, I love sleeping with the windows open, but this year has been so hot in Colorado that uh, it doesn't cool off uh, well enough at night. And we've got a blackout curtain, so then the, the air doesn't come in as well. So we got a little room air conditioning and we turn AC off the rest of the house, but just having our room, it's down to like 65, sleeping like a baby, I actually have a blanket on in the summer, which is totally weird, but in the winter, we're down to 60 degrees at night, and, uh, and you know, that is a great place to go with that. You want to not do any electronics an hour before bed. Um, oh, absolutely. Okay, Skywatcher, can you test New York patients? So here's the, all you New Yorkers, here's your one little thing. So we can drop ship the blood kit to you, but you have to actually go to um, uh, go across the border into Jersey or Connecticut or somewhere and get that blood drawn. Unfortunately, um, New York is the weirdest state. You cannot ship blood out of the state for whatever reason. And you may even have to sign something saying, I, uh, I did not get this drawn in New York. But we have lots of patients from New York, so don't worry about that. Um, Tony, I appreciate your free information. You give out so much professional wisdom and inside you are a blessing. Um, and Tony, I am wrinkly today, so sorry about that. Um, and do fibroids cause me to gain weight? So here's the deal. Fibroids, just like uh, cysts on your ovaries or any of these things, those don't cause you to gain weight. The weight going up because of the inflammation, because of the hormone imbalances, because of the gut issues, all those things are contributing to fibroids and your weight's going up at the same time. So the fibroids are not the problem. Fibroids are the symptom. Weight is not the problem, weight is the symptom. You've got to take a step back and get to the whys. You can't just treat a fibroid, you can't just take it out and go, ooh, now I'm fixed, and be like, oh yeah, I've got this weird smell, something burning in the car. Well, you take that thing off that's burning, but you don't fix why the car is overheating in the first place. Um, so, um, what if I can't go, I'm assuming Derek, to the bathroom? So if you can't go to the bathroom, um, there's a major digestion issue going on. Um, and so uh, you, know, you need to be, here's what it looks like. And if you're not doing this every day, there's an issue and you gotta figure it out. Peel a banana and hold it, uh, you know, once you go to the bathroom, hold that peeled banana over the toilet, kind of gross thought, but hold it over the toilet and go, does this peeled banana look like what's in the toilet? If it doesn't, then you are having a problem. And if you're not going one to three times a day, solid looking like that peeled banana, you are not going to be doing what you need to be doing as far as detoxification, clearing out different things. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't lose weight. So what can you do? Well, simple, start taking magnesium citrate. Just take magnesium citrate, gonna make you go. And um, and so that there you go with that part, but you gotta figure out why. Okay, um, do you have a microbiome imbalance? Bad bacteria, yeast, uh, any of those things? Is your vagus nerve not stimulating like it's supposed to? Are you in more of a chronic fight or flight state? Um, are you dealing with, um, dealing with any type of leaky gut? That's where you gotta really start digging deep into. Jennifer, uh, good to see you. I'm on three different blood pressure medications and my blood pressure uh, has been 90 over 50. I don't really know how I should adjust it. I don't want to withdraw problems from meds. Well, that, that's the nice part with blood pressure is you can check it nonstop every single day. And if it starts going up too high as you, as you wean off meds, then you just go back on those meds. And so I'm not telling you to do this, but this is just an example, would be if somebody drops their blood pressure medication in half, and, and they're fine, great, keep doing that. And then they drop it in another half, and the blood pressure goes up a little bit too high, then you may need to go back to that, uh, that previous dosage. 
Um, so, you know, you can check it all day long and see where it is. Do you take New York clients? Yes, again, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to, with the blood work, you can either do it locally, your own, if you've got insurance, things like that, we'll work with you that way. Uh, that's the only state that we, we have, that, uh, have that with, um, patients down by the city that uh, have LabCorp and they, they knew they were going to get it for free, et cetera. Or you can cross the border, get it drawn at a lab um, if you got family in Jersey or whatever, and then uh, and then go from there. So um, yes, we take uh, uh, New York clients and, um, and go ahead and click the link in the bio, schedule a free discovery call, and we'd love to talk to you about this. Again, anybody jumping on, if you have not registered for my five hour uh, this is what one hour to each 24 hour period starting on Sunday gonna throw everything I know about blood sugar at you guys my entire career over 20 years in practice I've learned I'm gonna be giving you every single thing I possibly can so um, so make sure you register for that one that's in the in the link tree in the bio there you can uh, do that one uh, Yep, uh, Saxenda works great for weight loss, but you have to stay hydrated. So again, maybe it works great for weight loss, but what happens when you stop taking it? Did you actually fix anything? You know, and you go back and do everything you did before, are you gonna stay weight loss? I don't think so. Uh, what do you recommend for someone with uh, borderline almost high cholesterol? Uh, fix your blood sugar. I mean, really, that, that's what it comes down to. Uh, you know, we look at the liver and we look at blood sugar and people's cholesterol gets better. Is fasting beneficial? Uh, Tracy, so for a lot of people, fasting, especially if they have uh, adrenal issues, if they go hypoglycemic, fasting is not beneficial. Who, who's fasting beneficial for? A lot of times it's going to be pre-diabetic, diabetic, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, people that are overweight, high blood sugar, things like that. Fasting is definitely beneficial. Uh, can you take Munjaro if you are nursing? Uh, I would hold off on taking about any drug besides you know, your, your thyroid medication, some of those things. Um, if, if my wife was nursing, I would be very, uh, very concerned on that one. Protein is high. Not sure what that means, if that means in the blood work. Um, who do we contact in New York? Skywatcher. Uh, just click the link in the bio if you're on TikTok and schedule that discovery call, and we'll walk you through that whole process. Um, does using coconut oil on skin as a moisturizer raise cholesterol? No, absolutely not. Even taking coconut oil in internally does not raise cholesterol. A lot of times, fix your blood sugar, eat more fat, and your cholesterol actually goes down. Uh, yes, again, uh, sleep deprived 30 S. Uh, uh, I, I just love it. I got to you know, do it again. I just stopped to say that that going to work with wrinkly clothes is very unprofessional. So uh, forgive me, I am unprofessional. And uh, I am wrinkly. I, I uh, these were sitting. So here, here's the deal. My wife uh, she does the laundry. Um, we've got four boys, and they're all in soccer. And she works at the office here. And we're running around. And we've got uh, guests in town. And these sat in the laundry basket for overnight, and they got a little wrinkly. So sorry. Um, creatine is high. Protein is high. Yeah. Uh, check your kidneys. You may not be clearing like you need to. Uh, but if you do enjoy wine with dinner, is that okay? on uh, Manjaro or other GLPs. You know, here's the deal. Um, you know, again, check your blood sugar after having that wine. Um, and if you are having wine, you know, maybe a little two, three ounces uh, is gonna be the max on there. Uh, hey, Christian, good to see you. Um, and who cares about wrinkles? I know, ignore trolls, you look fine. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, are you an MDDO gun, uh, gun climber? So my original training, and this was way back in the in the 90s, uh, I went to school as a doctor of chiropractic. I learned all about uh, natural medicine, all about uh, the body and how it and how it really correlates together. And for the last 20 years, I've been doing what's called functional medicine, is where we get in depth into each and every system um, and how those match together. Hey, Glenda, thanks for the kind words. We don't care about your wrinkles. Uh, <laughs> appreciate you. Um, so uh, I, I won't take it personally on on uh, what the sleep deprived person is saying. Um, so, you know, over the last 20 years, I've developed this method that we use where we incorporate um, brain work, uh, body work, the, meaning the metabolic, blood sugar, all these different things, and put it all together. So, uh, yep. Um, 
I have Addison's disease, anything on weight loss info. Yeah, so Addison's, again, you gotta fix the why. Fix why your, you know, your adrenals are revved up, why you're having that issue, is it autoimmune? You've gotta calm down that autoimmune. When is it time to get thyroid checked, 50 pound weight gain in a year? What? When is it time? Every six months, every 12 months. You know, we've got Glenda's on there and, and she's finishing up care, and yet, uh, you know, she every six months she's gonna be doing her blood work, you know, for, for a while, and then at some point every every 12 months. So, and we'll be checking uh, thyroid every time we do that. So you should be doing full thyroid, including Hashimoto's markers, every time. If your doctor won't do that, if your doctor won't check thyroid, let us know, we can drop ship. Um, that all anywhere in the country recommendation for Hashi's and hypothyroid, same thing. You've got to, if you've got Hashimoto's, you've got to calm down that autoimmune reaction. Don't look at it as a thyroid disease, look at it as an autoimmune disease and you will see massive changes through there. Um, I've done some uh, pretty major, if you check YouTube, I've got over 700 videos, I've got tons on autoimmune and uh, really, really see some differences. Uh, yeah. I, I actually have to jump, guys. I, I went a little bit over. I gotta go see a patient, but here's the deal. Um, so excited uh, that you guys joined me today. Think about what we talked about. Every single thing I talked about was um, the why. Not does this drug help? Does that supplement help? What's the one thing I can do for this? You have to fix the why. Because even if you take a drug, even if you do a surgery, even if you take a supplement, but you're not fixing the underlying cause, you're not going to be making that permanent change. And that's what I'm all about, what I want to do with every single one of my patients. We have offices in Colorado and Tennessee. I have doctors uh, that work with patients all over the world, and we are here to help. Whatever you have going on, if you're motivated, if you're excited, if you want to get your life back, click the link in the bio, send us a direct message, and schedule a discovery call and we will sit down for free, talk to you about what you have going on and let you know exactly uh, what you need to do next and if we can help. From there, we're going to um, also have, starting this Sunday, if you have not registered for it yet, I, I first time uh, we've released it, it's a five-part blood sugar masterclass and I'm gonna be going through everything I've learned over my career, giving you all the information I possibly can and just laying it out there. You're gonna have access to this. Um, we've got thousands of people are registered and uh, I want you guys to take massive action because we can change the the entire state of the health of this planet if we do that one thing. Heather, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to help us. I'm so glad I found your page. Bless you. Heather, all of you guys, love y'all. You, you uh, stay strong, keep your body cranking, and we'll talk soon, guys. Take care.